Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm presenting a talk that I prepared for Parliament in 2017 discussing some of the difficulties that we have with diet therapy. My name is Anita MacDonald. I'm a children's dietitian working with PKU and I'm giving this presentation on behalf of the NSPKU. PKU is a low priority in British healthcare. It was 65 years ago that we developed the diet therapy for our patients in Britain. But we are using a similar kind of therapy here today. PKU treatment has moved forward in other parts of the world, but here in Britain, we are sitting in a time warp. Even though we have no cure, many people are dismissive about PKU and think we have everything sorted. And even though we have people who have ill effects associated with their PKU, or who find diet therapy very difficult, we are unable to access new treatments to try and help them. And although PKU meets the definition of a rare disease, it's not quite rare enough as far as new treatments are concerned. The new treatments are expensive. They're not always considered cost effective. And despite our best efforts in producing evidence, it's never quite good enough to convince the decision-making bodies, even though the same evidence is used and accepted in other countries. And if we compare ourselves with diabetes and heart disease, yes, they produce better quality evidence. But in PKU, we don't have the same research opportunities and neither do we have the same number of patients to study. So what is the dietary treatment all about? Well, it's really quite severe. Patients with PKU can't eat meat, fish, eggs, ordinary cheese, ordinary bread, ordinary biscuits, ordinary flour, ordinary pasta. It's really quite a severe diet. And can you imagine living your life not eating all of these foods? It is true that patients with PKU need a small amount of phenylalanine for repair of body tissues and for growth. But the emphasis is on the amount small and this has to be measured out every day. Let's put this into perspective. The allowance that of protein that a patient with PKU can tolerate would be no more than two Weetabix or maybe no more than a large portion of McDonald's fries. And that's for the entire 24 hours. So incredibly limited. And of course, PKU affects every aspect of social life. It affects birthdays. It affects going out for the day. It affects school and nursery meals. It affects eating in the home. Christmas and Easter are particularly challenging. And whether we like it or not, often these events are all about chocolate. And yes, it is right that patients with PKU can go into the free from sections in the supermarket and they can buy a small Easter egg that may be very low in protein, but it's often minute. It's not pa packaged particularly well. It doesn't look attractive. It's often very expensive and it really doesn't hack it as far as our patients are concerned. So it can be incredibly difficult doing your shopping in the supermarket. You can't simply go in there and buy a loaf of bread or a box of pasta. You've got to dodge the meat in the fish aisle. You can't go down the biscuit aisle. You've got to scrutinize every single label of every packet that you purchase. Shopping can take an awful long time. This is very difficult for our families. And not surprisingly, our children struggle at school. They don't like telling their friends that they've got PKU. They don't like taking a packed lunch. The food looks and smells a little bit different. They're worried about being bullied at school. Sometimes the breath smells because of the taste of the protein substitute. And this is typical of what our parents would say. She came home really upset because some of the older children had said her food was disgusting. She wanted to sit on her own at dinner time. Our children feel isolated, different, guilty and ashamed of having their condition. And this is really very sad. And often our children are a little bit more dependent upon their parents because of the need to supervise the diet therapy. 
Also, PKU will impact on parents and family life. A recent study that was conducted showed that 59% of parents had high clinical levels of psychological distress. They worried about everything. They felt guilty about the diagnosis. They worried about blood phenylalanine levels. They worried about how well the children would do at school. They worried about access to low protein foods. And they worried about the future. And let's talk about prescriptions. Our families with PKU are very dependent on low protein special foods, such as bread and biscuits. These will make up 11% of their clinical food budget. These special products are only available via the GP. This is from a system that hasn't changed in 50 years. And it's really quite difficult and inflexible for our patients. We have patients who will run out of basic commodities like bread because they are embarrassed to ask for more supplies because they're worried about the criticism they will receive. We have mothers on the telephone in tears because of insensitivities that have been said to them on the phone. We've had GPs who refused to prescribe cake mix, low protein cake mix for a child's birthday because they consider it to be a luxury. So it's time for this system to change. This is really very antiquated in every way. And really this system should be transferred to the dietitians working in the specialist unit who understands the needs of their patients very well. There's many basic standards we're not meeting in the care of our patients with PKU. In 2017, the European guidelines brought out a number of recommendations for basic care. What I've done on this slide is looked at the care that we can provide with our patients compared with the European guidelines. The guidelines recommended that every child was followed up in a PKU centre. That doesn't happen in Britain right now. They recommended that every child receive neurocognitive testing at the age of 12, and then again at the age of 18. That certainly doesn't happen in Britain right now. They recommended that psychological support should be available in clinics. That doesn't happen in most clinics in Britain right now. They recommended that every patient should be in long-term care. Now, it is possible for our patients to be in long-term care, but it's our adult patients themselves who opt out of long-term care because they're unable to cope with the only treatment that we offer them. They recommended that every patient is tested for this pharmacological treatment, BH4, to see if they're responsive. That certainly doesn't happen in Britain. And we have no opportunities to try non-diet treatments for our patients. So let's move on to pharmacological treatments. We have one possible pharmacological treatment for our patients, but this isn't available on NHS England. This treatment is called BH4, a saproterin. It will only help a subsection of patients with PKU patients with mild or moderate PKU. But when it does work, it will help lower blood phenylalanine concentrations and it will enable patients with PKU to eat more dietary protein. Therefore, it's changing the diets from a very abnormal diet to a more normal diet. Now we say this is a newish treatment. It's actually been available for quite some time, almost 10 years. So it's really no longer a new treatment. But still, NHS England will not agree to prescribe it for our patients. We also worry about the introduction of new technologies when there's so much resistance to introducing this pharmacological therapy. We know that home blood monitoring for phenylalanine concentrations is just around the corner. And of course, everyone will accept home blood testing of blood sugars for patients with diabetes. So why shouldn't we have this kind of technology for our patients with PKU? One of the things that we really worried about at this moment in time is will home monitoring ever be reimbursed for our patients with PKU? So how will PKU ever become a priority in British healthcare? 
We just want the best treatment for our patients with PKU. And what we ask of you today is to listen to our story and help us go out there and get much better therapy for our patients. Thank you.